welcome to the Mount Gill Missionary Baptist Church, number 8th Vernon Drive, Conway, Arkansas, where River Forrest C. Cooper is a pastor. We are excited to announce that we are back in service! Please go to www.mountgillnbc.com to reserve your spot for in-person worship. We are limited to 75 people, so reservations are needed. If you are unable to attend and signed up, please let our administration know prior to Saturday at noon. Services are held in the Family Life Center. Thank you for joining us for our in-person services and our virtual services each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Be blessed as we prepare for the worship experience on today.
Lord God, take the things that you've studied, Lord God, and then just have your way in the day, Lord God. Do what it like only you can, Lord God. Speak to us. Lord God, we pray for you. We all come to praise and glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. How many of you thank God for this another day? Thank God for salvation. Thank God for change. And thank God for continual change. He's still a change. He's still making a way. He's still opening the door. He's still in healing the sick. He's still doing things in your life. He's still working. Bless his name. Change. I'm so glad he changed. I don't walk like I used to walk. Don't talk like I used to talk. God has been good to us all. It's a wonderful. I know they're trying to let it go, but somebody out here, y'all, y'all, y'all need that one right now. I know somebody out here is going through. You don't know which way to turn. Let him change. That's it. Station angels by yeah. our bedside didn't let hurt or harm come our way and bid death to stand this distance. Allowed our golden moments to roll on just a few days longer. Early this morning, you taught us with a divine finger of love. It was not an alarm clock, it was not the smell of coffee on the coffee pot, but it was your grace yeah. that woke us for another day. We want to tell you thank you, thank you God. for this time of worship. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for his precious blood. Thank you that he died, but he didn't stay dead. Thank you now this time of worship. We pray that you would bless us as we worship you and you alone. You get all the glory. Thank you now that you can look at every home. You can look at every hospital room. We have members, sisters. Not at home recovering, Brother Greg, yes, full at yes, home Lord. recovering. Yes, God. Mother Claudia Cummins in the hospital yes, recovering. Lord. Her children by her bedside. Yes. Sister Barbara Thomas at home yes, recovering. God, we thank you that you're going to do you. things with yeah. I may have missed the name, but you know who they are. Yes, Jesus. And you know where they are. So bless those that are here today. We pr pray and worship your name. Make your word believable and re receivable. Strengthen. Guard and guide us. The days ahead, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Give God a hand of praise if you will. Yeah. Amen. God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Give our praise to him, hand. Give our praise to him. Amen. Award-winning praise to him, amen. Amen. Give our musicians a hand. Amen. Sister Tiffany Vineyard, thank you, Amen. Get a drama song. Amen. Amen. Our, our video team, Brother Vanya, sons, and the golden voice of young Timothy. Amen. To our sound tech, Brother Willie. To all of God's children, to all of our deacons, deacons' wives, trustees, mothers, members, Sister Cooper, Sister Stephanie, Sister Audrey. To our associate minister, Reverend Gilmore, youth pastor Pickens, to all of God's children. Did I miss anybody? Hey, Amen. It's just good to be here. My clock says 11.33. See if we can get out of here by 12. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Good to see you. My cousin, the Priors are here. Hey, Amen. Mr. Lou Jean Pryor and wife, Sister Faye, and their, their daughter, our own, Sister Jennifer Pryor Woods. Hey, Amen. Amen. I see some other faces in the place. I'm just glad to see you. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, verses 20, 21, and 22. Job chapter 1. While they're getting in, thank you for coming. I want to say that we are trying to be short and to the point because it's an hour, 45 minutes an hour is a long time to hold a mask on your face. So I want to respect you all for coming. Amen. A lot of extra activity that we once had, we no longer have because we're trying to keep everybody safe. COVID is still in full effect. Amen. So let us be careful and be cautious. Amen. Job chapter 1, verses 20 through 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshiped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned nor, sin not, nor charged God falsely. I will talk about for a few minutes, can you uh, trust the process? Say that with me. Can you trust the process? Life presents uncomfortable, uncontrollable, challenging, tearful tragic times but they won't last forever life presents loss life presents grief but sooner or later time and God's grace will dry your tears now three questions that I want to ask all of us today and I wanted to make sure that I ask them on the front end that I want to ask them and maybe you had the same question since all of us are going through and experiencing something are troubles sent? If so, I want to know where they come from. Does trouble serve a purpose? What is God trying to get us to go to or grow through? Does trouble search out our weak spots? I don't care who you are, how strong you are, there is something that will find your weak spot. All of us have a weak spot. Can I get a witness? We, we, we talk about being changed, and thank God they, that worship put us into a whole new mode. But even in our changing, we still have some moments when something gets on our last nerve, someone punches a budding, or something goes on in your life, and you will find out yourself that you have a weak spot. Maybe we need to ask these questions to Job, and maybe his life lessons can speak to our situations. I don't like to just look at it from a historical point of view. If I can't see the principle in it then and make it live in our life now and see how we can get through whatever we are going through because we learn from those that have already went through. Can I get a witness? Job saga has been talked about for long days. One, com one commentary says that you can really slice Job's life up into four slices. The prologue, the dialogue, the monologue, and the epilogue. Prologue is that few statements that God makes there was a man, chapter 1, verse 1, in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. God, God sets the stage for this tragic moment in his life. He talks about Job, and I need to tell you this, that God sent some stuff or allowed, shall we say, some things to go Job's way because God knew Job could handle it. That's something for all of us. I don't care what you're dealing with. God allows some, some things to, uh, in Job's life. Job experienced some things and some tragedies and some loss, but God knew that Job could handle it. I'm talking about Job, but I need to make sure that you don't miss the point. There are some things that go on in your life. God allowed it to happen because he knew you could handle it. What's going on in your life somebody else can't handle? 
But God knew Job had balance. That's what he meant when he said he feared God and he had shewed evil and he was upright. He had balance. He had balance. And you, if you don't have it, you need to find somebody to help you to get some balance. Get some balance. I used to, used to climb pro poles, Brother Pilgrim. I was a lineman. And I had to learn balance. When you're climbing the pole and you're working, you have to use both hands. And I, I told them I have one hand for them and one hand for me. I kept holding on. But, but as life went on, Rem Pickens, Rem Gilmore, I become a little better equipped to handle my pole climbing to the point that I could turn around with the pole behind me and working with both hands in front of me. Because time gave me some balance. You've been through some stuff in your past that you ought to know how to handle now. Some things that God brought you through, some things that he saw you through, whether you made an A, B, C, D, or just flat flunk. Don't look at me like, all of us have failed some classes now. And maybe not on your report card, but there have been some times that you failed. And you had to look at God and say, God, I'm sorry. But now you thank God for balance. Notice God didn't give Job this balance early in his life. This come after Job had worked hard and labored hard and married, raised a family. <coughs> Legendary preacher Dr. Jasper Williams said in an interview that it's a shame that wisdom don't come with youth. But you only get wisdom through time and through age. Is there anybody in the house that if you knew then... What, what you know now, you would have done some things different. The prologue, the introduction of an event. God knew Job, and God knows that Job could handle whatever the test and whatever satanic attack he would face. God knew Job's character, and God knew Job's commitment. Char Job would not crack under pressure. If you're going to be a man, a father, a leader of anything, you cannot crack under pressure. Now, 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 President Obama, one of the coolest men I know from a distance. I don't know him personally, but I saw pressure for eight years. I, I saw him stand. I don't agree with everything he's done because I understand he's not a preacher, not a prophet. He's a politician. So I understand I can respect him. But one of the things that Obama did is he did not allow folk to make him crack to where he would say something just off the wall. He wasn't going to tell you just to wash some stuff on your body and get rid of COVID, like crack under pressure. Y'all caught that one, didn't you? <laughs> I'm trying to be realistic without being a politician. Don't crack. Over every situation that you face. My baby said a few minutes ago, be still and know that I am God. I I've seen God do his best work when I had sense enough to shut my mouth. I I've seen God do his best work so saying when I didn't have sense enough to shut my mouth, he shut it for me. I was at work one day, and Lord knows I had something I wanted to say, and I wanted to get it out. I wanted to tell him, but God, Sister Diane, when he would not let me open my mouth. Don't crack under pressure. Dialogue. After you get through the prologue, that's God talking about Job's character. Then there's a dialogue between God and Satan. Listen. If the sons of God meet around the throne and Satan will show up at the throne of God, he don't have any problem showing up at your house. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you tithe. I don't care how much you serve. I don't care if you preacher, deacon, choir member, mother, ministry leader. The devil has no problem showing up at your house. He not only showed up around the throne with the sons of God, but he was talking. The Lord said, where you been? He said, oh, just going to and fro. I've just been running through Conway and Gold Lake and Mayflower and Sherwood and Prattsville and wherever I can go. I've just been running around trying to find somebody 
I can pick on. Is there anybody ever felt like Satan just picking on you? Every now and then you say, Lord, make him stop picking on me. Watch this. Don't miss the first point I told you. The reason he's picking on you and the reason God allowed him to pick on you is because God knew you can handle it. Satan and God talking, and he says, well, since you're looking, God said, have you, you, you look at that fella there. That's mine. That's my boy right there, Job. That also enough to make you want to holler right there. When, when the Lord says, have you tried my servant, Job, it's one thing for us to claim God. But it's a whole nother issue when God claims us. He says, have you tried my servant, Job? Dialogue going on and says, yeah, I saw him. But you got a hedge around him. You blessed him so much. You've given him so much. And you, you, you've given him all the stuff. But to tell you what, Job is, a, watch this, y'all write this on y'all in notes. Satan accuses Job of being a holy hypocrite. He says, if you move all of that stuff, if you take his cattle, take his, his yoke of oxen, you take all of his livestock, take everything you got, I'll make him curse you to your face. How many of us are holy hypocrites? Are you sure you love God because he's God or you love God because of what God had in his hand? I got one of my cousins, his nickname, I, I won't tell you who he is, where he is, but I call, I ain't going to call folk nickname, but somebody might call mine. <laughs> but her, her, her little grandson, he, he's a baby, so he asked me, I had a moon pie in my hand one day. He was probably two years old, maybe. So he wanted some moon pie, so I was going to give him a bite of the moon pie. But he walks to me, and he takes the whole pie. And so I just nicknamed him Moon Pie. Now, he's, he's, he's a growing young teenager, so I don't want to embarrass him in front of his girlfriend, so I don't call him Moon Pie anymore. But, but he wanted what was in my hand. Y'all see me? Many of us worship God because of what's in his hand. Many of us worship God because of what he can do for you. Many of us hang out with friends. You, you got some folk that hang out with you because they think you got stuff. You think they really love you, lose all the stuff you got. Ask Michael Vick. As long as he had all them friends and they were running stuff and they got him in trouble because they run at his house. As soon as all this stuff ran out, they left. Let me make sure I'm still in Bible territory. The prodigal son, he left with, with I call him, he left home, done the deep pocket. He, he had, his pocket had the month. Y'all, y'all, y'all street talk, y'all. He had fat, fat pockets, but when all of his money ran out, when all of his resources ran out, all of those friends that were with him left him all alone. Don't be guilty of treating God like a sugar daddy. No, don't, don't, don't just call him when you need him. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Y'all look at me, Pastor. I'm trying to make y'all think. Many of us, God, I need you to help me pay this bill. Lord, I need you to get me a new car. Lord, I need you to get me a new relationship. Lord, I need you to help me with this home. How many of us just need him for your own sanity of having a relationship with someone that loves you like you are? That's what I like about God. He knows who I am. He knows my strong points, my weak points, and he loves me just like I am. Dialogue. In the dialogue, it wasn't just Job, I mean, God and Satan talking, but if you read the consistent process of the book of Job, you'll find out that Job has some friends in the dialogue. Elihu, Bildad, Zophar, and Eliphaz. Eliphaz was a theologian. Eliphaz in his dialogue said, God is righteous, and man brings trouble on himself. Which sounds good, right? But if you read the original setting, Job didn't bring anything on himself. And you read the setting there, God said, try my servant Job. 
In other words, Job didn't do anything. God allowed some stuff to come his way. God allowed it, but God did not do it. Don't, don't, don't look at storms and look at tragedies and look at buildings collapse and think that God did it. God allows some stuff to come in our life Ooh, so he can manifest his glory so we can stop holding on and depending on stuff. So that theologian was okay, but he's not on God's, t- he's not on God's level. And y'all catch that one. And then Bildad was the traditionalist. He said, God, God never twists judgment. It's always been that way. So he thinks that God is a justice kind of God. But I thank God that he's not a just God. Ain't you glad God don't dispense justice on us? Ain't you glad that God don't call us in his courtroom? If he was a God of justice, n- none of us would pass. You got the theologian, you got the traditionalist, then you got so far the moralist. God knows iniquity and he sees it in you. We are born bent. As the old folk would say, you are born bent toward hell because you are born in sin and shapen in iniquity. All of us have some short falls and some shortcomings and, and some mishaps and some misunderstanding and some mistakes in all of our lives. But, but, but God is not the one that brought this up on Job. And remember, this dialogue is about Job. But you just, just for the record, somebody looking at your life and looking at where you have fallen and looking at how you used to be, but you ain't no more. That's Prashville talk right there. People will look at you and judge you because of what you're going through because they think that God has punished you or God has done something to you. But sometimes God uses you as a pawn to play the game of chess with the devil. And at the end, God going to make the last move. Somebody should have hollered right there. Sometimes God will use our lives as an instrument for his glory and let Satan know in his face. And that's the kind of fellow I am. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe in this stuff behind your back. When you go at someone, you ought to... Y'all look at me. Come on, come on. You, you don't shoot in the crowd. You go and deal directly with who you're dealing with. In your face. God is about to. Satan. Y'all know what I want to say. I ain't going to say it. I'm gonna, y'all be nice. Y'all be nice, Cooper. He going to slap it. Y'all add what y'all want to that. God. Elihu, the last one says, God is. God is good, and suffering is a mystery. But sometimes God uses it to refine the righteous. Elihu, that's what he said. He's close enough in that one. That thought, sometimes God uses suffering to refine us. Anybody ever lost a loved one? Thought you, you, you couldn't make it? I'm not in this house by myself. All of us have lost somebody that held a spot. I remember when my grandmother passed and I was her baby. Now, all of us thought Granny loved us, but I felt like she loved me more than everybody else. But then they felt the same way, so we all had an attachment. And then, next thing you know, my mom passes, my dad passes. You, you lose folk, and what? Ooh, Holy Ghost, help me say this. When you lose them, it ought to draw you closer to God. Amen? In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. Isaiah been too busy looking at his uncle. Soon as so God knew to get all he needed out of Isaiah, he had to move that which was between him and Isaiah. Sometimes God needs to move stuff that's between us so he can get closer to us. Suffering is a mystery. The monologue is a speech at the end of a dissertation by one actor or one person. In this case, Job is a monologue from after, for after facing trials from satanic attack, after dealing with tears of grief of the constant barrage of reports concerning losing his family, losing his fortune, losing his future, losing his finance, 
and then losing his friends out of accusation. Now, to be honest, I want to talk to you about be careful who your friends are. Bill Dad, Zophar, Elihu, and Eliphaz were his friends. And they all had some accusations about Job's life. Job, we your friends. You can tell us what it is. What's that hidden secret? Be careful who your friends are. Be careful who you attach to. There ought to be someone in your life that you can be honest with. And the old folk taught us best, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell Jesus all about what you're going through. And we deal with the monologue, dialogue, and the uh, prologue. The epilogue is the conclusion of the matter. And the conclusion of the matter is God's going to talk. That's, that's too long to go into a sermonic presentation today. But at the conclusion of the situation, God's going to speak up. At the end of your problem, God's going to speak. At the end of your tears, God's going to speak. At the end of your tragic moment of losing a job, of losing a loved one, of losing a friend, God will speak to you. You got, this is your homework for the month of July. Just read and take your time. Read through Job and he, see where God is talking to Job because Job asked God some questions. Job asked God about the situation. Job even cursed the day he was born and said, I cursed the day I was born, but he never cursed God. But God asked him one day, he said, Job, I don't have to answer your question, but I want to ask you one. Where were you when I scooped up the world and shaped the world with my hand? Job, where were you when I hung the stars in the blackened of a midnight sky? Job, where were you when I hung a bright sun with a blue velvet behind it? Job, where were you when I gave the lightning a zig, gave the thunder its roll? Job, where were you? When I give the barrel his growl and the lion his roar. Job, where were you when I made hummingbirds sing? Job, where were you? See, we got sense enough that we want to ask God some questions. Watch this. You can ask God anything you want, but God don't have to answer. There's only one reason and one word that God don't have because God don't have to answer. There's only one word. You know what that word is? God. When he's God, that means everything else wraps up in him. But let me get ready to get out of here. I only got five minutes, y'all. Y'all going to have to talk back to get me out of here. I got three points, and I want to take my seat. From the text, looking at verses 22 through, 20 through, through 22. Point number one is the testing of life. God personally oversees the events in Job's life. Likewise, in our own lives, God is aware of every tear, there's not a tear that falls that God doesn't see. God is personally aware of every situation, every time you go by the doctor's office. God is aware of every time you have to tally up your money to see if you got enough to pay your bills. God is aware of every time you have to wrap up your child and send them out to school, cover them with prayer till they get back home. God is aware of every test, every trial, every tribulation in your life. God is present and aware. The reason I know he's aware is because early in the text, God says, tell Job, he tells the devil, you can touch his stuff, but don't touch his life. Ain't it good to have a God in your life? That when everything else is going on, God can tell the enemy, you can only go so far. Because if you go further than that, you, God says you break his rule, and then the enemy got to deal with God because the enemy touched one of God's children. And I thank God that I'm one of his. Can I get a witness? Every tragic moment in your life, every time you went to work and someone else got to raise, but you done the job. Every moment in your life. When someone mistreated you, every moment in your life, even when you mistreated someone, God is aware of the test. No matter who you are, he's aware. Not only is God aware of the test, the testing of your life, but the trials and tragedies that we face. Satanic attack comes from Satan into everyone's life. Satan will attack your family. Satan will attack your finances. Satan will attack your future and your fortune. If you don't, don't recognize it, Satan will be all over your stuff. 
But, that nullifies, but nullifies everything I just said. He's all over your stuff, but God is over him. That's shout territory right there. Satan told God, if you just let me get to Job's stuff, let me take his children. I had a problem with that in every one of those situations where someone said, your children was having a party in the, in the oldest son's house and a storm came along and the house fell on all of them and even I was left to tell you. Somebody always left to tell the story. Well, I wonder what you were doing that you left out. <laughs> That's a whole new sermon, y'all, I'm looking at. And then the cattle were in the field grazing and the Sabians came and took all of your cattle and only I was left to tell you. What were you doing that you just left to tell somebody? And then they turned around, they took all of your yoke of oxen, they took all, all of your donkeys, they took all of your stuff. And I was the only left to tell. Sometimes some folk are just looking for something to talk about. That's a whole nother story, y'all. But in the midst of all of that, Satan says to the Lord that if you allow me to touch Job's stuff, if you allow me to pull the stuff that you've given Job, I'll make Job curse you to your face. But Job had a word for Satan right there. And you say what well, Job arose in verse number 20. He rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. When you got to go to the doctor and be put on anesthesia, you need to know how to worship. When you got cancer two times in your house, you need to know how to get on your face and worship. When you lose a job, they told everyone else would lose a job but you, and you're the only one to lose your job. Your department, you better know how to worship. In other words, he tells us in the text that no matter what happened in Job's life, no matter what you gave him, no matter what you took from him, nothing stood between him and his God, and Job knew how to worship when he was losing everything in his life. And every now and then, you ought to know how to throw your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Job said, the Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of God. He said, all of this stuff, I had nothing when I showed up, and I carry nothing when I leave. Blessed be the name of God. Can I get a witness? We have to learn how to worship in the midst of our situation. We have to learn how to worship when we're going through, not just worship after we get through. But we ought to know like David, David worshiped the Lord on the backside of a mountain. You ought to know like Daniel. They say when Daniel fell in the lion's den, he fell down on his knees and started to worship the Lord. You got to learn how to worship God when you're going through, when the heat is on. When the lines are rowing, can I get a witness? Every now and then, you ought to throw up both your hands and say, bless the name of God. Throw your hands in the air and say, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. I know you're able. I know you can do it. You've done it in days past and gone. You're the same God back then and you're the same God right now. You brought my mama through, and she told me about you one day, and I gave my life to you, and I worship your name. Can I get a witness? Job said, blessed be the name of God. Blessed be the name of God. Blessed be his name. After every attack, every test, you ought to have a testimony. I should be able to drop the mic into anybody's hand. And your life ought to be a testimony of how God showed up. You ever had more bills than money? That's a testimony. You ever had to go to the doctor's office? That's a testimony. You've been through over a year and a half of COVID and you are still here? That's a testimony. The process. Can you trust the process? 
If you have a diamond on your finger, around your neck, around your wrist, it had to go through a process. Diamond in its original state is black, like coal, like coal, dark. But it has to go through some deep pressure. Don't crack under pressure. You don't get one carat diamond. They can look at them and tell when they're cracked. But diamonds have to go through a process. Maybe some of you say, Pastor, I don't like diamonds, I like pearl. But do you understand what a pearl has to go through? A pearl has to go through a process to become a pearl. Watch this. And the pearl is the only jewel that if it breaks is no good. That's why the church is the precious pearl of Christ. He wants it unified and together because a pearl is only good if it's all in one piece. It's been put in, 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 the, in the shell, and in the shell that becomes a piece of, of dirt and debris that should not be in the shell. And then the process is that the pearl itself builds a, a, a shield around that piece of dirt, builds that, and it pressurizes. And all of a sudden, what, become, what started out as dirt and debris is now a precious pearl. Well, maybe you said, I don't, I don't like diamonds, and I'm not crazy about pearls, I like gold. Do you understand what it takes to make pure gold? Do you understand that gold has to go through the heat of the fire? The gold has to be dug out and then mined out. And sometimes God got to dig some stuff out of your life. Sometimes God has to mine some stuff out of our lives. Sometimes he got to not only mine it out, but then put us in a fleshing pot, turn the heat up. And some of you saying, God, the heat too hot. But he says, you're not ready yet. And the only way you can get gold is, 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 is when, when the goldsmith can look in the pot of gold and see his reflection. God wants to see the reflection of himself in our lives. And thank God he knows that we are precious like diamonds, pearls, and gold. And he won't stop. If that had been any of us, we said, Lord, come on now. You done took my children. Lord, come on now. When, when are you going to stop? But God want to know if we can worship with nothing. God, God, God wants to know if we can worship when the accusation and the reputation says, Job done hit rock bottom. And Job looks at the enemy, shaves his head. In the morning, morning, he was in grief. But even in his grief, he worshiped the Lord. Sometimes you got to worship him with tears. That's why I'm okay with some of y'all wave, some of y'all holler, some of y'all clap, but you ought to have your own style of worship. Your outward response is this. Stuff don't matter. But my God does. That's what you ought to say outwardly. Stuff don't matter. You're not going to find a Brinks truck or a hearse following you. Some of your children, your family going to take it and spend it. We're going to have a celebration. We'll be eating chicken by two. And it's going to happen to all of us. So don't hold on to stuff that's either going to leave you or you're going to leave it. Number two, that's your, number one is your outward response. Stuff don't matter. Number two is your, in, your inward response is, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Though I'm sick, yet I trust you. Though I don't have the job I want, though I don't have the relationship I God, I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I holler when I think about how much them old saints knew. They would say time is filled. With swift transition, none on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And I thank God that 
Jesus said, in case you let go of me, I got you. He says, those whom I hold in my hand, no man. And if he can hold Job, he got you too. If he can hold Daniel, he got you too. If he can hold the Hebrew boys, he got you too. If he can hold Joseph down in Egypt, he got you. If you, if you can't hold God, get in his hand. Your outward response, your inward response, but his upward response. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a good way to end your day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a good way to start your day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a good way to walk throughout the day. Because if you live in this life, some folk going to try you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But Gary, the only reason I can stand here is blessed be the name of the Lord. The only reason I can, 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 can stand bold and get up every morning, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you get up, God will get you through what you got to go through. Life is a process. The more we know about God, the closer we are to God the better we can handle the stages of the process. The question I wanted to give us today is, can you trust the process? God knows what he's doing. Even if we don't, we can be philosophical like the old Bill Dad, Zophar, Elihu, and the other one, or we can just simply say, God is all in your hand. I'm going to be guided by your word. I'm going to worship you no matter what. All in his hand. All in his hand. Amen. All. Your children, all. Your employment, all. Your sickness, all. The doctor's going to work on you, all. Your automobile that ain't running right. All. You don't need one. Just take check God. Put his hands on that when you got. This government stuff, all. Say this one in closing. He's on in that musicians. Too many times we are spend, we spend more time looking at the government, looking at the news, trying to figure out who's gonna be the next in charge. Who's going to be the next president? Who's going to be the next governor? Who's going to be the next polit political person that makes a move? We're looking to too many folk to do what only one can do. We're looking to too many people to do what only one can do. We have to keep the march and go through the civil exercise of life and voting and promoting and supporting. But ultimately, we must have a relationship with God. Because it don't matter who on the, in the White House as long as God on the throne. Watch this. He kept us through all of that. Some folk in here could tell you some stories about what God kept them through. If he can keep them through that, what makes you think he can't handle your little problem? If you're here today, standing, everybody standing, so you can, just can. We invite you. Trust him again today. Trust him again today. And then we're trying to be COVID safe, so you don't need to come to the altar. If you raise your hand where you are, we'll pray for you. If you want to become a member, Stephanie over here will take your information at the end of worship. We want to make sure that you use this moment to get back in the process, to grow with God. Let God handle everything in your life. We know we have some family members that need our prayer support. Supplicating for those. Those in the sick house, hospital. Those that are confined at home. Those young children that are trying to find their way in life. It behooves us to pray for them. Because that was once us. We cannot let them go. I tell a lot of my friends about the young boys, since we can't throw them away, we have to show them the way. So whatever you have on your heart, praise team is singing. Your hands are raised.
whatever your need is, we're praying right now, God. We pray for salvation for those that are in need. God, we pray for covering for those young children. God, we pray for healing for those family members, those that are confined to hospitals, nursing homes, those that are going through. You are the same, God. Heal their bodies. Give them strength. Continue to let them recover. That you do all things well. God, do it now. Keep us at peace while we go through this time of turmoil and misunderstanding, racial upheaval. Let us remember that we are your child. And no matter what the world holds, you hold the world in your hand. God bless, heal, deliver, and set free. Meet every need. Heal everybody. Cover, keep, guide, and guard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would.